So as all focus was in uh, Watamu where Pauline Joroge was being arraigned in court, um, th there was a very strange message that came from the, uh, the, the chief of general staff of one of the military factions in Sudan where he was uh, sending out a warning to President Ruto. I've never, like in the history, I've never had, even when we had President Moi, when we were deep in the uh, dictatorship of the Moi, the Moi kakistocracy. Eh, we've never had, eh, we've never seen foreign relations or neighborly relations deteriorate to these, uh, these new laws or these depths. Just listen to what the general said. يجي زي الرئيس الكيني يقول أنا أجيب غوات شرق أفريقيا يا الرئيس الكيني غوات شرق أفريقيا خليها في محلها أنت جيب أنت جيب الجيش الكيني تعال والدولة والدولة الدعمات الدعمات والدعم كل المرتزقة الزيارة الدعمات بالقرش مشتريات بالقرش في ذات so why is, number one, he has uh, mentioned something about the rapid response forces, which is what uh, I think the Kenyan mission to Congo was named as such. And he mentioned that there are countries which funded President Ruto to launch that rapid response forces uh, and the mercenaries. What is he referring to? Because I don't know what we've gotten ourselves into. What messes have we got? Because always remember that we have Kenyans everywhere. We have Kenyans in Sudan. We have Kenyans all over. And uh, such statements, such polarizing statements, are uh, they, they, they make us panic. Are we, are, are we safe when we are traveling? Uh, because Kenyans are all over. Secondly, what are the global issues at play over here? Why, why does this Lieutenant General Aliata look so angry? What have we done to uh, make him uh, make him so outraged? Uh, we, we need we need uh, solid answers because now we are crossing over into the foray of uh, diplomacy and international relations. Uh, what what is Ruto? What's the game? What is our foreign relations policy? Uh, I've said Kenya has always been a beacon of peace, uh, a beacon of stability within the region. We have always been welcoming to our neighbors. We've hosted the Sudan peace process, uh, peace agreement, which was signed here in Nairobi in 2004. We've uh, hosted the Somalian refugees in Kakuma. Eh? We've, uh, we've hosted uh, very many dissidents. Uhuru, first of all, <laughs> Uhuru Kenyatta is the one who because of his uh, friendship with uh, President Muhammad Buhari and because Brookside milk was being exported to Nigeria, uh, now he gave away the, uh, the, the, the Biafra leader who was, uh, I think, uh, abducted by the security agencies in Nairobi and then uh, deported to Nigeria. And now he's there, he's facing charges, and now his people are causing so much violence because he's in jail. Uh, so what are we doing? Which positions are we taking? Uh, because we've understood that Uhuru did that for the sake of his pers personal and family business, Brookside, so that it can it can flourish. So he was ready to uh, to, to place Kenyans and uh, and wherever they are at risk. Now, uh, what about now? What what are the stakes? What are the business deals behind the scenes? Because this guy is insinuating he has a broader uh, broader insinuation, uh, broader uh, allegations that he's making, where he's talking about. Uh, who funded uh, those rapid response forces? I always thought that eh, it was the KDF which was going alone. So who else? Who are the people who he is alluding to? Secondly, now then I saw on a WhatsApp group people saying that the Sudan this faction is a weak faction. Kenya the KDF can can uh, obliterate it. Hmm? You, you know instantly. Eh, then I saw this guy, this MP who was Ambare's boyfriend. I saw, I saw him now saying that, oh, you know, I don't know, eh, you, you are threatening us. Kenya is a sovereign country, blah, blah, blah. You're talking about Kenya is a sovereign country. And the, the governor of Mandera the other day said that 60% of Mandera is under Al Shabab control. Who are you lying to? Hmm? When the facts are so glaring, when everything, 60% of Mandera, that's a county in the Kenya, Kenyan Republic. We have our, you know, KDF in Somalia. Why don't we recall them so that they quell, uh, the, the, they, they can uh, re-establish Kenyan domination in Mandera? 
And then we focus on securing our borders. You know, we leave other people to solve their own messes. We can never be the, the neighborhood uh, watch, watchdog. Eh? We cannot be the big brother all the time pretending that eh, we, are, we, are, we are going there to solve their issues. These issues are historical and most of them are caused by Western forces and, well, you know, all the, the, the communism versus the capitalism uh, uh, fights. So we, we cannot be all the time entangled in those ones. Why can't we let the, the neighbors, they have their right to self-determination and we secure our borders. It's as simple as that. Why? Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is amazing. Uh, to, I've never seen such a threat. All through the presidency of Moi, uh, of, of Kibaki. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the Uhuru presidency because that was, that was one train wreck. Yeah, that was one train wreck in motion. So even today, like today, the whole weekend, I've just been receiving calls from people. Everyone just wishing you bad. Everyone is just telling you, Francis, you're going to be arrested. You know, you, you're, the government is coming for, for creators and for bloggers and everything. And I'm thinking like, must you be so stupid? I told you the generation to avoid uh, emulating is the, the, the boomers. The boomers as their counterparts uh, the, 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 in, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, those uh, Asian tigers, as they were recalibrating their economies, using Kenya's blueprint to power them uh, to greater heights of prosperity. Our boomers were in Kenya, they were coming from the rural areas with a CV. They come, they get jobs, they get mortgages, there's nothing they can show us. There's nothing they did. In fact, their contempt for young people is what <laughs> drove their greed and their hate and they ended up just grabbing our playgrounds, uh, uh, diminishing funds for youth-related activities. They eh, became religious degenerates. They toxified our schools and they removed subjects that would make us uh, more, more independent in the future. So those are the people you are not supposed to emulate. So when the narrative comes and you are there spewing uh, scaremongering and spewing fear and everything, you you want to undermine the work of our, the, those who went before us, the freedom fighters, the ones who had the guts to, to tell the government and to show the government a collective middle finger. That's what you're doing. And then there are so many other people here who are fighting. Why must you? Um, why must you see it amongst yourself to want to reduce? To want to? Uh, because what you're doing is you're encouraging censorship. You're normalizing impunity. What you're telling me is stop posting because we only want to see Diab and people talking on uh, social media. We are. We don't want your very uh, reliable and neutral advice. That's what you're telling. You're, you're saying that I don't reserve my right of an opinion even when it's as neutral as, as can be. So we, we have a generation and we have an element of toxicity that has permeated within our society. And yet, even in with the glaring efforts by groups like LSK, LSK today sent a, a, a notification and they said that advocates, irrespective of where they work, have a duty to uphold the law and the constitution without fear or favor. State councils in the office of the DPP are under constitutional obligation to exercise their powers independently while holding public trust. The prosecutions and by extension the legal professions, we therefore wish to notify our members within the DPP, uh, that should they make decisions that betray public trust, undermine the rule of law, and bring disrepute to the legal professions, the LSK shall issue them with a certificate of dishonor and immediately consent commence proceedings to remove them from the role of advocates. Now, that is very powerful. That the, the, the LSK, you know, Uhuru, collapsed all these institutions which he would need today. He collapsed the media, he collapsed the NGOs. You remember uh, Dennis Itumbi calling them evil society, which now they need because now he is now an aggrieved party because a few guns have been stolen from him. Oh my God, Uhuru is now an aggrieved, you know, he's now, he's now oppressed. Uh, he's now one of us. <laughs> So in the light of such organizations taking extraordinary measures to, eh, uh, to, to restore uh, a semblance of good governance, eh, uh, you still have people scaremongering and telling you, don't speak, don't do what. I was very uh, offended that we, we, the, more we, uh, the more we are trying to evolve, the more people are trying to take us behind. There, there are many good things you can see as regards to progress within our democratic space. We are, we, we are far from being a, a country like Tanzania. We, we, we have to celebrate and we have to fight to maintain this democracy that our forefathers fought for, including independence. We cannot be towing to the establishment uh, thinking.